peace, infinite waters diving deep once again. Five things you've been doing wrong every day and you didn't even know it. You didn't have a clue. Woo, can I get a hello there? The truth will hit you like a smack in the face, but it will be the best smack in the world. I have made a lot of discoveries which have led to a lot of changes for the better. I'm going to share with you what's helped me along my journey. Number one, what if I told you that you have been sleeping wrong your entire life? This is a message to myself. So this is my personal experience. Eight hours of sleep. That is the dominant program running in our minds. I discovered we all have to sleep according to our natural biorhythm. I may need nine hours. You may need 10 hours. You may need 15 hours. Yeah, I'm talking to you. What happens when you go to work, you come back home, you're tired, you're hungry, and your face is sweating, go and grab a tissue. You turn on the light and that's when the party starts. It's summertime. This tricks your brain into feeling it's on holiday again. So this interferes with our natural biorhythm. There was a great book written called Lights Out and it talked off with the onset of modern electricity, there was a rise in mental health issues, cardiovascular issues, weight gain problems. Also, there was another book which corresponded to my own way that I sleep. I don't sleep in an eight hour stretch. I sleep in two intervals during the day, at nighttime and during the day <laughs> in nature, lying my head back, breathing in that good prana and just drifting off into Nirvana. Nodding my head even when I'm sleeping, feels good. This book was called at day's close, night in times past. A fascinating read by Roger E. Kirch. And it talked of how in Western civilization, before the industrial revolution and modern electricity, they also slept in two intervals throughout the day. The first time was in the early evening. Then they would wake up and for an hour, they would meditate, reflect, and then they would go back to sleep. And that's what they did. Now that one hour is very important because it was a time for mindfulness meditation. It was a time for reflection. So it did wonders. The ancient Kemites or Egyptians saw sleep as a way of piercing the veil of the Maya, which is the illusion of this 3D dimension. It was a gateway into the unknown a way we could activate our pineal glands because that's the time melatonin is created in the darkness. So our third eye is beaming. And Imhotep, the father of medicine, they built sleep temples in his honor where you had pharaohs going, and people who were getting oracle readings 
So it was a way of knowing what was going to happen. Because once again, the more you sleep, the more your memory increases. The temple of Apollo in ancient Greece, you had Pythia, the Oracle of Delphi. And once again, when she was going into these trance-like states, hypnosis, it is all another form of sleep, shutting down the conscious mind and becoming your body 100%. And this shows us why sleep is so powerful. Now, the reason why so many of us are stressed, running around like cockroaches on steroids, is because it's not that we are not sleeping enough, is that the issue? No. The problem is that we are not in tune with our natural biorhythm. So what are the neuroscientists saying? First of all, why do we need to sleep? Jeff Liff, an amazing neuroscientist, talks about how when you are going to sleep, the brain is clearing itself out of all of these toxins. You have cerebrospinal fluid, which is helping to eliminate the toxins that have built up in your brain. So it does wonders. Brainwashing at its finest. Sign up here. You also have the amazing Russell Foster. And what he talks of is fascinating too. Nobody knows why we have to sleep, but he gave three great reasons. Restoration, that is the time where the brain is detoxing, getting rid of toxins. Energy conservation and memory consolidation where we become so creative. We tap into the inner genius. You wake up with a million and one ideas. Because when you are stressed, you lose memory. Oh yes, that happens. Sleep helps us to restore memory. So once we can all start becoming more aware of our sleeping pattern, which is more in alignment to our own natural biorhythm, it does wonderful things. Number two, pooping. Oh yeah, I went there. A lot of us, we are sitting on toilet seats. I was for a long time until I started to question it. I found fascinating things. The natural way our ancestors used to go to the toilet was they would be squatting. Now this is fundamental because what squatting is doing is that we are now at a 35 degree angle. So our anorectal angle is 35 degrees, which helps with getting rid of waste. It is straight, our colon is straight. When we are sitting down in that 90 degree angle, that famous angle you've seen, now there is a kink and some of the waste is getting trapped there. That's why a lot of people, they have hemorrhoids. So I tried it out and it worked. It helped with digestion, eliminating toxic waste from the body. It did wonderful, magnificent things. Squat away. Number three is eating and drinking at the same time. In my early journey, 
I used to love, before I became a vegan, milk and chocolate chip cookies. Oh yeah, dip it in and enjoy. When we are eating and drinking at the same time, for instance, water with bread, <laughs> you are now diluting the hydrochloric acid which is needed to break down the food. When you drink and eat at different times, now you have a high concentration of hydrochloric acid, so now food can be broken down in a more efficient way. And this has served me in helping me become my greatest version. Mwah. Number four, sitting down on Facebook 24 seven. We're hunched over <laughs> our posture. The great social psychologist, Amy Cuddy, talked of how our body language shapes who we are. There are low power poses and there are high power poses. When we are tight, tense and constricted, we are in a low power pose. Bad posture. This creates tension in our neck across our whole body. When we are in a high power pose, our arms are extended. And this in turn changes how we see ourselves, not only how other people see us. So it gives us more confidence. She discovered high power poses increase testosterone levels and inhibited cortisol levels, making us feel more powerful. I've tried it and it's done wonderful things. And lastly, number five is what I call the conveyor belt lifestyle. Wisdom is power. When you don't question your reality, you will pay the price. For a long time, I was just going along in what I call the conveyor belt lifestyle, where you wake up, you eat your breakfast, you go to work, you come home, and now it starts all over again. If you don't question the truth of who you are, you can never rise to become your greatest version because we've been played in the worst way. Right now, we are freeing our minds, more so we are rising higher in consciousness. And that can only happen when you use critical thinking. Question everything I'm saying. I don't have all the answers, but all I'm doing here is sharing my personal experiences. Don't believe it until you know it for yourself. The truth can't be told. It has to be realized. And the moment you start living your own truth, not what society wants you to be, but who you want to be, now life takes on a whole new meaning. So there you have it. Maybe you were doing these things already. So just ignore this video. But if you weren't, that's something to think about. We are here enjoying ourselves. Infinite waters, diving deep once again. Stay well, stay healthy.